Let's start off from Labadi, where some youth are there this morning protesting the alleged sale of the aviation land at La Wireless. My colleague from Adom TV, Bafo Redu Amo, joins us with more. Bafo, what can you report? Bafo, good morning. If you can hear me, what can you report from Labadi? All right, Bafo, if you can hear me, can you let me know what is happening or what can you report from Labadi? Yeah, presently we are at the um, La Dariko Tupong um, Municipal Assembly's office. The concerned youth of uh, La just presented a petition to the MC uh, Solomon Nuki over some kind of uh, sale of land. We are talking about civil aviation authority land um, that was supposed to government release to uh, the traditional authorities. And they were thinking that um, after the land has been um, released to them, um, some kind of negotiations, or if there's going to be any resale, then the concern use must be in the loan. And in this case, uh, what we are witnessing now is the La, um, civil aviation authority lands and um, La, uh, civil aviation um, school park mm -hmm. having um, resold to other developers. And that's what they are saying, that they are not happy about that. So the petition that they presented, they are accusing some of their traditional authorities for um, reselling the land for few cities to other developers, which they are not happy. And they presented their petition to the MCE, and the MCE has also assured them that they are going to look into it, attend to it, and uh, give them feedback. They, have, they are saying that after two months, and they haven't heard anything from the assembly or the MCE, they will um, rewrite another letter, send to him and remind him of what we have um, brought up today. All right, uh, Bafo, so have you spoken to any authorities on this? Yeah, we, we spoke to the convener and the one who presented the petition. And what have they been saying? That's what they are saying, that the land, um, they are uh, traditional authorities uh, in 1843 that they start with the government. And the government uh, they give the, the land uh, to government okay. about 80 acres of land uh, for over 100 years. After the 100 years, the agreement was um, re-entered. And after a few years, um, the land, when as, um, the land access, um, they are saying that um, the land was supposed to come if the government is not using the land. So they have to bring, uh, the government has to uh, release the land to the authorities. And through the government release the land. All of a sudden, a few uh, years back, they've seen that they went to the land and the land is being redeveloped. And they are not aware of the new developer who is on the land. That's what they want the assembly to come in. All right, and have the youth been telling you what their next action will be? They are asking, they, they didn't specify. They didn't specify. That they are, but what they are saying is that after two months, they will come back to the assembly, find out what is happening, and if nothing is happening again, they will write another petition to the MCE to remind him of the action that they're taking today. All right. Did you see any stuff of the civil aviation? No, we haven't been to the civil aviation. Um, we are trying to get one of the chiefs who started in the negotiation team with the government for the uh, release of the land. We are trying to get him to um, uh, get his version because he, he uh, as we understand, he was part of the team, the traditional authority team that started with the government for the land to be released to the authority. All right, thank you. That is uh, Bafo Eredu, mm -hmm. who is uh, my colleague from Adom FM, giving us an update of that protest. But let's go to other stories now, where uh, Osantihe Notunfo Ose, two to the second, is asking teachers, education, and employment ministries to resort to the use of dialogue to reduce industrial actions. He says not only are students at the receiving end of such frequent actions, but they also affect education in general. There's more in the following report. Speaking at the Sixth Quadrennial National Delegates Conference of NAT, the Asante Hene urged teacher unions and government to use consultative dialogue to build consensus to eliminate frequent industrial actions. It does get truly 
imagine when industrial relations break down in education and teachers abandon their classrooms and lecture halls? Obviously, those who really suffer in this are the innocent children. The distress caused to the poor students in any industrial action is incalculable. I urge you all to focus your minds on the need for an improved formula of negotiations and consultations, which will minimize, if not eliminate, any recourse to industrial action with harmful consequences upon our children. As we seek the best from our teachers, so our teachers must be made to feel truly valued. Zero. Though impressed by the positive impacts of free senior high school, the overlord of the Ashanti Kingdom wants Ghana's educational system streamlined to stimulate creativity and innovation. In the new digital age, Asia is out here competing with the West for global economic superiority. They have done this through an educational system designed to stimulate creativity and innovation to produce creators and inventors. By contrast, our educational system has turned us into a vast expanding market place of consumers of other people's creations. So, painful as it may be, we have to start asking why we are still crawling through mounds of refuse, unable to solve the simplest environmental challenges on Mother Earth. The nub of the challenge is to change from an educational system for double consumers to a system focused on creativity and innovation. A system dear to produce inventors and creators so our nation too can find its proper place in this age of science and technology. Sure. Keynote speaker and former Vice Chancellor of the University of Cape Coast, Reverend Professor Emmanuel Obeyado, admitted continuous use of force by NAT over the period to drum home their demands from government have yielded no results. According to him, such politically tainted approaches are no longer effective means of negotiations. Reverend Professor Obeyado wants teacher associations to hone their negotiation skills. to enhance skills of members to negotiate, dialogue, and perform at peak levels so as to become essential part of any decision and policy-making process in the country. From Kumasi for Joy News, Emmanuel Bright's reporting. Now let's move on to other stories where the Ghana Union of Traders Association, Guta, is warning prices of goods will increase significantly if government reverses the reduction of values of selected items. President of Guta, Dr. Joseph Obing, told Joy News the benchmark value was the only straw businesses were holding on to. It follows a statement from the Ghana Revenue Authority, GRA, which announced that effective today, January 4, benchmark values will be reversed for some 43 selected items. The reversal will affect the selected items from all three categories on which the reversal was applied. First, Vice Chairman of Guta, Clement Watting, in an interview with Israelia on the AIM show, emphasized the position of the group, warning the move by government will affect prices of goods in general. We all know that currently we have about, uh, I think about is it eight or nine or ten, you know, cement manufacturing countries yes locally uh, uh, companies yeah locally yes yes and and we all know that uh, in fact uh, they, they they are doing well they are doing well but still the cost of of of, of cement you know keeps on rising why is it that we have all these factories here but still cost of cement keeps rising it means that still they are not they are, they, they, they are trying as much as possible to meet the local demand but the capacity they they they, 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 they have not as, as yet, you know, produce to the full, you know, capacity. So once we have about 10 companies and then they are trying, you know, to, 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 to do well, 
this is the area that maybe we have to you know you know focus and then and then uh, try and then and then pilot you made mention of a uh, uh, a toilet, uh, to to toilet, toilet paper. Yeah. Yes, we, toilet. To yes, we have companies here that are also, you know, uh, uh, doing well in that regard. Then we have we have companies here also that are also, you know, uh, doing well in manufacturing of, uh, of 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 biscuits. You see, these are the areas that maybe gov governments must, you know, try, you know, to focus, resource them in terms of uh, of, of, of of finance, so that they will be able, you know, to produce to capacity. What is the point? Let's go back to Kumase because it was all joy as hundreds of families assembled at the Plush Rectory Park for the fun filled Love Nshira FM family party in the park. We'll bring you that after the break. You're still watching Joy News Desk with me, Mapita CBD. Before I take you to Kumasi at the Ratu Park, let's go back to the Ghana Union of Traders Association conversation where Lord Mensah has also been responding. Tariffs. And these objectives, one of them is to probably increase more imports. And then secondly, the imports must be targeted towards maybe uh, goods that are coming to serve us probably an input to the economic activities of this country. And then also, you look at the local manufacturer side. I mean, you realize that anytime you know, you reduce tariffs, it encourages more import. And if you encourage more import, what is going to happen is that prices on the market has a tendency of you know, coming down. And when price comes down, the local manufacturers probably may not be able to afford to produce at that lower price and therefore knocking them off business. And that is why you see that conflict between the two parties that you mentioned earlier. And so this is, you know, bound to happen in every environment where, you know, you allow imports to come and compete with local manufacturing, you know, products. Now let's look at how the government made the u turn. And I will always say that, you know, some of the policies that are being rolled out by government are normally politically motivated than economic. Okay. Because, you know, Explain. In, 20, in 2019, you know, at the time that this policy was being introduced, government, you know, desperation for revenue generation was there. It was clearly on the grounds that, okay, fine, we had borrowed up to a point where we need money. So I did not support this idea of you know, discount import. Yeah. Exactly. I do not support, not that necessarily the reversal, but then, you know, um, reducing the import as of that time in 2019. Yeah. I wasn't in favor of it. Because, you know, when you were the appetite of the importer, after a certain time and you want to remove it, it becomes a problem. Because it gives that kind of laxity into the local system to which, you know, um, the effort that we need to I mean, move towards production would tend, would tend to be reducing. So at the point in time where you have some way, somehow, you know, production capacity and you want to reduce it, people's appetite have already been developed in importation. And as a result of that, you will start getting this conflict. But let me also tell you one thing. If you see a price of any imported item on the shelves of this country, it's not driven only by price. I remember those days when government was saying that, look, we're trying to, you know, reduce this reduction, provide this tariff reduction so that, you know, government can, sorry, product on the market can be reduced. You know, price of products can be reduced. But I can tell you that it's not only tariffs that, you know, moves the price of, you know, um, product, imported product on the market. And some, in some ways, some are in economics, we call them tradables. And you, 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 you don't really, I mean, determine only this price. Now, you have several indicators that move this price. One of them is the margins that those importers are also looking for. Now, are they ready to compromise some of their margins 
as a result of this reversal? That's one question. And that is where my good friend has the other, at the other side, you know, maybe arguing from. But then let's also look at other aspects of price drivers. You can see clearly, I noted some few things now. Um, we have tariffs, you know, that government has control over. We have inflation that government has control over. Because when the goods comes to the port, obviously those goods need to be moved from their various distribution centers. And of course, you are going to use fuel to do that. So if at that point, you know, fuel prices are high, obviously it will be built up, it will build up into the prices that we are looking at now. Now you also look at, you know, um, the, the, the expected exchange rates that that importer is looking out for. Because by the time he finishes selling off his product, what is going to be the exchange rate that is going to convert the Ghanaian currency into to get a foreign currency so that he can import into the future? All these things are things that builds up into you know, the price of a commodity on the market. So if you say that you are providing tariffs reduction, and as a result of that, you're going to have you know, price reduction on our market, you might be making a mistake because you know, all these indicators build up into the price and you will not know, you know whether it is making impact. The last time I heard from the finance minister, he gave an indication that they've been providing the subsidies for importers, but prices of commodities on the market are not going down. Then I said, yes, I've been vindicated you know, in 2019. When I said that, have we done the research to know that the price of import, import products on our market is mainly determined by tariffs? And so until we establish that, we cannot introduce a policy that will give this benchmark, you know, values reduction. So effectively, we have come back to that U10 where government says, okay, fine. I'm not getting the benefits that, you know, move me to introduce this, you know, kind of, uh, what we call it, subsidies. So if I'm not getting it, then let me revert back. Because the essence of providing these subsidies is to ensure that, you know, goods comes into the country, you do more import, government benefits from what we call economies of skills. Because the more import you do as a result of the reduction, the more government benefits on more, more of the tariffs. And then secondly, getting more products coming into the, the system increases economic activities. And as a result of that, the various indirect taxes that government wants to take will also be, you know, improved. So effectively, right. if the government is not getting that, then it, it will call for U10. Right. And that is what, you know, um, happened in this country as we speak now. So, so Prof, um, I've been sp speaking with, uh, we've been speaking with Clement, and Clement is, is still on, on the line. And he makes the point that governments, they don't quite have a problem with government reversing the, the policy but they feel that the approach should have been different. They are looking at more like a piloted uh, face of it so that you select some items. And we all agree, at least in the conversation I've had with uh, Clement, that cement, for instance, is one of those that you can decide that, okay, I want to reverse the, the benchmark policy. So he selects some items and do that because he makes the point that the capacity of the local industry to produce, to meet the demand, isn't quite there yet. So if you do these things, you're likely to end up with prices still going up and you're not going to achieve the, the impact or what you were hoping to achieve. Well, um, Clement makes sense in that direction. But then let me also um, tell Clement that uh, probably, I mean, like I said, I've not done the research. That is why I will use the word, I mean, where probability and tendencies and all those kind of economic words. You know, um, there's a likelihood that the government has done a research and realized that the capacity that we need, uh, we need, I mean, might be more than in it, we need to produce locally, might be more than what, you know, the importers will be bringing in. So when you take cement, for instance, like you mentioned earlier, about eight, you know, companies are on the market now. Now, if you're going to import cement and the prices are high, when you come to the market and the local manufacturers are producing to a certain level of price, you cannot afford to import more of the cement. So in a way, you, uh, government is trying to propel, you know, local manufacturers to produce more. And that is why, you know, we have, the uh, government is coming up with these policies. Now let's, uh, let's also go back to the piloting case. You realize that when the policy was being introduced, we, ne we never realized any piloting. It came all out, you know, as a policy that, you know, 
was touching on certain product. And now my expectation was that, okay, fine. These products are products that are more sensitive as far as the economic demand is concerned in this country. And so therefore, if we are targeting them, then probably we know what we are doing. And like I said earlier, it could be that the political you know, force behind that policy was more than the economic force. And that is why the government has made you turn. And you know, I'm not surprised to see these agitations coming from Clement and his uh, oh. people. All right. Maroon, and that's how we end Joy News Desk. My name is Mapisa Sividi. For more news, you can log on to myjoyonline.com.